everybody. Welcome to a new video. It's an absolutely gorgeous afternoon out here. And this video is going to be super focused on doing as much work as I can possibly get done in the cupboard and on the door. And I'm going to start with an easy win, hopefully, by putting the trim on the bottom of the door and attaching the little fuzzy thing. So I have this door trim thing. The last one I bought, I very foolishly left it out in the brutal brutal sun and it got all warped and funky so I'm hoping that this nice straight one will be a lot easier to work with uh, because the other one was quite impossible so the idea is to liberate it from its packaging there we go mission accomplished and then I have this piece here that I made in a different video um, that will sort of slot in like that and then the whole thing will go on the bottom of the door. But first things first, I have to cut this to size. I love hacksaws. They're so useful. I feel like it's the most underrated of all the saws. And I'm just always using it every day. So if you don't have a hacksaw in your toolkit, I highly recommend you get one. Let's sand. So here we are at the back of the door. I've already oiled the back of this piece. I couldn't bring myself to film it again using that tiny paintbrush. So the next step is gonna be to figure out the height so that it has a nice gentle brushy stroke on top of the stones and also make sure it's level. But I'm not totally sure if I want to mark it up together or if I want to take the sticky thing off the back and put this on first and then put the wooden thing on top of it afterwards. I feel like it'll be easier to do it separately and it might give it more strength because I can fasten this on independently and then fasten this on top and then give it kind of extra double strength. So maybe I'll do that. I don't even know if this thing's actually going to be sticky or not. The one that I left in the sun, it wouldn't even come off, but I was hoping that that's because I left it in the sun and not because it's just a piece of crap, but I don't know. Maybe it is just a piece of crap. Let's try this side. Come on. Come on. Oh, there we go. I mean, it's not super sticky, but it's not a piece of crap. All right. Moment of truth. And then the next step is fastening this on top of here. Um, I don't know if I should do nails or screws. I feel like nails will look much better, but, well actually this piece here, this black thing, it slides out. So I can, in theory, put this plastic thing on permanently or for a long time. And then when this gets damaged, which it will, I can replace it, slide it out and replace it with a new one. So maybe I will use nails and just have the whole thing look a little bit nicer. Yes, I'm gonna use nails. But first, let's test the sweepy action. Sweepy action seems okay. I've had a change of plans. I'm gonna use these tiny screws instead might be a horrible idea, I don't know. I'm gonna pre-drill. So I definitely should have marked uh, where I was gonna do the 
nailing and screwing before I put the thing on because I have these other screws underneath there and I need to basically try not to hit those. So I'm going to be hopping back and forth from my computer screen to the bottom of the door and back again to try to mark where I'm going to be putting these screws in. So I'll mark everything up pre-drill and check in again when it's ready to get fastened on. Actually, before I get too carried away, it's probably a good idea to just put one screw in and see what it it does because the screw head is actually sort of big. So it'll probably stick out a little bit, which might not work. Oh. And it broke the plastic, but that might be okay. I think it'll be okay. It'll be okay. Filming down here on the floor is super awkward and time consuming, and I'm really quite eager to get a couple more things done in the cupboard. So let me attach this thing on and I'll check in again when it's finished. So I've attached the piece of wood on the bottom, but of course I've managed to sort of screw up the little corner piece here. I put some holes where there's screws beneath it and bashed the nail in a little wrong, but it's okay. I think it still looks really cool. So I'm going to oil it up and then I think I'm actually going to work on a couple of surprise projects and share them with you tomorrow rather than continue to work on woodworking because I find that when I start to get tired, I start to make mistakes and I'd prefer not to do that. So I'm going to work on something a little different and get back to the woodworking tomorrow. So I'll see you guys then. But before I say goodnight, I think somebody out here wants to say hello. Hi, Larry. How's it going? I know. You can go in the house very soon. I just need to take Mikey to the vet. And I'm pretty sure that's going to happen tomorrow, so bear with me just a little longer, little guy. I'm going to come out and hang out with you very soon. Just let me finish my work. So, myself and Larry, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye! <laughs> it's a brand new day, and I've been editing videos this morning, and I just can't stop myself from peering over... I'm looking at the bottom of the door. I am very happy with how this has turned out. But now it's time to switch focus back to the closet. I'm gonna work on the piece of wood that goes here. We're gonna do the roof and I've got this piece of wood that I'm gonna attempt to do something with that hopefully looks really cool. So everything is set up outside. Let's get started. But first, let's say hello to this little guy. Good morning. You're coming inside today. But first, I need to clean my house so you don't get up to too much mischief. I have this horrible feeling that I'm going to invite him in. Mikey's not going to be massively excited about that. And there might be some kind of cat antics that might terrorize the house. So the fewer things I have laying around, the better. So I've got a lot of cleaning in my future today, a lot of tidying. So... Soon, Larry, soon we can have a cuddle inside, but for now, let's go to the workshop. Come on, come on, let's go, come on. I made this piece a little while ago and it's gonna be the top of the cupboard door. And I have notched it out, so in theory, it should sit into some notches that I've already carved in the cupboard uprights and then get bolted in with wooden pegs. True timber frame style, but I'm cheating. I've cheated in a couple places with my timber framing and what I've done is put screws in but sunk them in and then put dowels or pieces of wood in over top of the screws so that nobody would ever know except for now I'm telling you so now you know so the secret is out but it just makes things easier and quicker and it still looks the same so I feel like it's a really nice compromise. So my plan for right now is to mark out where I want to put the holes, drill them. Hopefully this drill bit is the right size. It might be a little too small, but I do want a nice snug fit. And get this piece completely ready to go into place in the cupboard. 
The notches that I made in the cupboard uprights aren't finished. They still need a little bit of work. So once I get this piece ready, we'll go back inside and finish that up. But before I start drilling with reckless abandon on this nice piece, I'm gonna practice here. So this hole needs to be smaller than this piece of wood by quite a bit. I'm going to use my trusty, rusty carving knife to whittle down the bit of wood, and then that means it's going to have a super, super nice snug fit without any spaces around the edges. So let me chop off a bit of this, give it a bit of a whittle, and we'll see if it fits in the hole. Actually, let's whittle first, chop later. So a screw goes in there, a sunken right in, this gets bashed in. Nice and tightly. I don't know if maybe I need a bigger drill bit. I think it'll be fine. And then depending on the look I was going for, I could leave the peg thing sticking out. I could cut them all off to the same length. But I think in this case, I'm gonna cut it off nice and flush and then give the whole thing a sand. And when I oil it, this should pop out really nicely against the rest of the wood. So this has gone totally according to plan. I think it looks good. I love it when it works out like that. So now it's time to drill some holes in this. So this piece is ready to go, but before I work more on this, let's go into the cupboard and finish off some holes that are already there and get some dowels in place. Those holes have already been drilled and they've got screws in them and this piece is very securely on here but it had a bunch of debris and dirt that it just kind of filled up. So I drilled it out, now I'm going to go make some dowels and finish these pieces off. Okay, I need a bunch more of these guys. I'm gonna get on the production line and check in again when they're ready to go in the holes. So I've cut into the wood a little bit, but it's okay because this hasn't been linseed oiled yet. And the reason is because I plan on sanding it nice and smooth afterwards. Most of this cupboard frame isn't oiled because I do intend on sanding it. And once you oil it with linseed oil, sanding it just kind of gums it up and makes it horrible. So I've left it unsanded. I'm going to clean this all up later on. But now I'm going to continue putting in the pegs and I'll see you when it's all done. Come on, Larry. Come on. Yeah, he's a little confused. You can come in. Don't be afraid. It's okay. I'm going to let you have a little explore around while Mikey's not here. I still haven't tidied, but I think he won't cause too much chaos. So you just have a little wander around my place. 
a little explorer, get to know your new kingdom, and enjoy. Straight to the food. <laughs> He's really nervous. You don't have to eat from Mikey's bowl. You have your own food. Go on. Have a wander. Go on. It's okay. I've been working really hard inside the cupboard, putting render on the back wall and also on the bottom beneath the battery. And I'm pretty filthy. I've ruined my shirts, um, but that's okay. I've ruined all of my shirts. So now I'm going to take a break and I'm going to show you the secret project from yesterday which is green tomato chutney that I made. It took ages. It was a very enjoyable experience, kind of meditative, just chopping and sticking things in a pot. Luckily it's a one pot wonder, so everything was just chopped up and then I just stuck it on the stove. So that part was easy, but the chopping itself was quite time consuming and the onions nearly made my eyeballs melt out of my face. I'm not good at chopping onions. It does not agree with me. And so now I have this beautiful chutney and I haven't tried it yet. I've made a couple of crackers and I'm gonna dip into this and give it a taste and I'm really excited. I love a good chutney and I'm really quite surprised at how red it turned out despite using green tomatoes. So I'm extremely curious. If it's anything like the green tomato pickles that I made recently, I'm in for a winner. I actually took some of the pickles over to my friend Kimberly. She gave them a try. Right? Oh, to go. She really liked them. And the last thing that I'm going to try to make with these green tomatoes, I still have so many of them left, is a burger style relish. Sort of a sweet hot dog kind of relishy type thing. So I'm very curious about that as well. I had no idea green tomatoes could be so tasty and so useful in so many ways. So I've made a couple crackers here. I didn't put any spice in the chutney. So I'm going to contrast the sweet with my jalapenos. See what that tastes like. And then I've got it here as well. I don't have any more cheddar cheese or anything like that left, so I figured I'd stick it on cream cheese, stick it on a cracker. But I'm also gonna just try it without anything. It's another winner. I can't believe how good this is. Um, it's really sweet, but it's also super flavorful. And it's very simple. It's just red onions, green tomatoes, a whole lot of sugar, some salt, some pepper. I put in some mustard seeds, some cayenne pepper, but it's not very spicy, um, vinegar, and maybe a couple other spices I checked in there that aren't in the recipe I used. Um, but I'll put my version of this down in the description. And if you have green tomatoes at the end of the year, definitely make pickles, definitely make chutney, and I'll share the relish experiment whenever I make that probably in a future video very soon. I'm a fan. Let's try it in cracker form. So good. I actually don't really buy or make chutneys very often, so I have no idea what to use a sweet tomato chutney for besides sticking it on crackers or sticking it on pieces of cheese. So. I'm open to any other suggestions. I've got five jars of the stuff and I will try to eat this in any way possible because it's delicious. So let's try the spicy bite. Mm. That's really good. I like the contrast between the sweet and the spicy. I'm a fan. I love it. Green tomatoes. Where have they been all my life? So. I'm gonna take a break, have my little snack, relax for a little while, I've been pretty busy today. And then after my little chutney snack break, I'm gonna continue chiseling out the space for the piece of wood I made, get that into place, and then move on to working on the roof. So, I'll see you soon. So my yummy chutney snack is done and I'm ready to push on with getting this thing in place. This piece is ready to go, but these spaces need a little bit more chiseling. Doesn't quite fit in the whole way. It goes the other way.
So maybe I could force it in with clamps or brute force of a hammer, but I'm going to take the gentle approach and basically try to chisel out a little bit more space there so it can slot right in and fit in nice and snugly. And then I'll screw it and add the pegs. So this is going to take a while. I'll check back in again when this thing slots hopefully nicely into place. Not yet, but hopefully soon. I think I've done it. It almost fit earlier. I shaved off a little bit more. And I'm pretty sure it's going to fit in nice and snug. So let's see. Wrong way. <laughs> I'm really happy with this. It's in there nice and snugly. Not too many gaps around the outsides. It doesn't stick out too much. Just a little bit. And this side is maybe a bit more gappy and weird looking, but I'm happy with it. It's nice and sturdy, strengthens up this whole corner operation, and yeah, looks good. Okay, I'm really happy with this. I've got all my little pegs in place and I feel like I've done a lot. So much so that that's it from this video. So the relish fun with the green tomatoes will come in another video, even though I will make it tonight. I have to go find Mikey and take him to the vet and then I've got some cleaning to do. Anytime I film inside the house it turns into a complete disaster zone, especially when I do stuff with lime. So though progress is slow, I'm super happy with how the door has turned out so far. And I'm really happy with the chutney. And I'm really liking these little peg things as well. So I feel like I've done a good amount of work in the past couple days. And I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you did, like, subscribe, share it around, all that stuff. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.